We received an email asking a very good question, and I thought I would put this onto a video so that maybe other people can benefit from it as well. Um, so Michael from the East Coast, I hope I'm not uh, outing you too much. Um, I think that's generic enough. Contacted us and said, hey, um, I have a 300 BRC. It's a Savage uh, brand rifle. And I live in the East Coast, but sometimes I shoot out West where there are wide open spaces. And so just wondering about a scope recommendation. So there are a lot of good answers to this. It's kind of like, you know, what's a good car to buy? Well, you can't go wrong with a bunch of choices. Like there are going to be pros and cons. And the same thing is true with scopes. So Night Force is a very popular brand. I don't have a Night Force, but they are very high quality. And uh, a lot of people love them. Schmidt and Bender is a very high-end scope. A lot of people really like those. Um, I think that they charge a lot for what you get. Uh, you know, there's kind of a, a point of diminishing returns, and they have lowered their prices a bit over the last years with all the competition. Um, but I'm primarily going to talk about the brand that I am most familiar with because we've purchased a lot of them over the years, um, and we do get a discount, uh, like a, a partner affiliate uh, type of discount because we're a, a shooting instruction business. So we are getting a discount on these. Well, be open about that. However, we, we choose them and we use them. And even if we didn't get a discount, we would still use them. So there are a, are a couple options for shooting long range that I'm going to toss out there. The first would be a Vortex Viper. And this is going to be somewhere in the $900 to $1,200 range. And you can either get them on, uh, you can get them on Amazon or Optics Planet or at a local store, where whatever kind of shopping you prefer. I'm going to put a link uh, down below to several of these using our uh, uh, Amazon affiliate link. Uh, so if you click on that, I'd love it. Uh, but if not, that's fine too. Um, so Vortex Viper, I like high magnification. And I think their latest is 5 to 25. That's the PST Generation 2. Um, it's good. They also have an XLR uh, reticuled scope. So if you just search for Vortex Viper XLR, um, that's, I like that scope as well. There's, there's an option that some scopes have that has the illuminated red reticule. I've had a bunch of scopes with that and I tried it and I've never put a battery in since trying it and just realizing it doesn't really do much for me. So I wouldn't care about that part. Viper is kind of the, the least expensive I would go. I guess another option would be going with a completely different brand, which would be Arkin scopes. And they're doing a decent job. Uh, they're still a, a Chinese scope, so not, not high quality, but a decent scope. Um, so Arkin would be the cheapest option. So getting back into Vortex brand, Viper would be the lowest Vortex brand that I would suggest. I believe that the glass is made in Japan and then they're assembled in China, I believe. So that's a step up from everything being made and assembled in China. The next step up would be their razor line. And that's what we love. We have quite a few of those on a number of different long range rifles. And it kind of goes to the a couple sayings, buy once, cry once. Um, another coach said, you know, my dad always told me we're too poor to buy cheap stuff. So yeah, you're gonna spend more. You're gonna be more in the 2000 ish dollar range. So kind of double of the Viper line but you're gonna get a way better quality. You're not gonna to have to send it in for repairs on their excellent warranty as frequently. Um, they'll, they'll last better, it's a crisper image. The clicks, the click value is better. Um, so I think that that's a, a worthwhile thing if you're willing to put the money into it. There are a couple things that are really important. I, I like high magnification, but it's kind of up to you. Um, I like if you're shooting at a, a mile, it's nice to be able to dial it up to 25 or 30 uh, magnification if there's not too much mirage coming up. And, and by the way, if I, any of the things I'm saying uh, aren't making complete sense, we wrote a book that will describe uh, a lot of these things to you. I'll put a link in the description also uh, about long range and extreme long range shooting. Um, and, and one of the things that's important before you go buy the scope is get first focal plane. It's called FFP, and there's 
there's some good reasons behind it, but just long story short, make sure the scope you get is FFP. The other big consideration is who are you going to be shooting with? You're going to have to decide between minutes of angle, MOA, and mil radian, MIL. And those are two measurement systems. And just like inches or centimeters, they're both, the metric and the imperial system are both great ways to measure things. One's not better than the other. But the important part, getting back away from that example to mills or MOA, who are you going to be shooting with most of the time? And if the person with whom you're going to be shooting most of the time uses mill, get a mill scope. If the people with whom you're going to be shooting most of the time use MOA, get MOA. Um, I happen to be an MOA person, and I have trouble communicating when someone speaks MIL, MIL language. Uh, but others are very familiar with that, and people with really high IQs can, can communicate in both. Uh, but you'll have to decide one or the other. So if it was me, I would get an MOA with a uh, first focal plane reticule. I like as busy of a reticule as possible. Like it's called a Christmas tree reticle. And there's just all kinds of information on it. And it's good for measuring when you shoot something at, at 1,800 yards and you see the dust kick up uh, a certain distance away, two minute, two and a half minutes away. You can kind of adjust and realize how far you're missing. Whereas if you just had a simple uh, up and down line and left and right line, that simple duplex reticle doesn't give you enough precise information for your follow-up shots. So I like busy reticles. I hope this has been helpful. And whatever you do, um, you're not going to go too wrong. As long as you spend at least $1,000 and you get a first focal plane and you contemplate what it is you're going to want as far as uh, uh, mill or MOA, you'll do well. Uh, now, another tip is when you're buying your rings to put on the scope, make sure that you get the correct size. Some scopes are 34 millimeters, some are 30 millimeters, others are different sizes. There's also a height that the uh, ring is, the center of the ring is above the top of the, the Picatinny rail that's on your rifle. So a medium is a good place to start, but you might order it and find out you didn't get it right. Also, some manufacturers, when they sell rings, they sell them one at a time. It's not a pair. So make sure you read carefully so you're not all excited getting ready to put it together and you realize you only have one ring instead of two. Um, another consideration is a the rail on your gun. If you're going to be shooting extreme long range, then you're going to want more cant on your uh, rail. And I like to have at least a 20 MOA rail. 40 MOA is even better but those are harder to find. And your rifle might already have that built into it. Um, some scope mount systems have the, the rings connected and there's also a uh, the inclination, a, a 20 degree cant, uh, not 20 degree, 20 MOA uh, cant inclination. Um, so that could be handy as well. Um, and again, I'll, I'll leave a few links uh, down below and hopefully this helps.